To The Point with Michael Williams. Good morning. The historic ouster of the Speaker of the U.S. House, the Florida connection now, and a reaction from your members of Congress. North Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates led the ouster of Kevin McCarthy. Local Republican Congressman Brian Mast is my first guest today. He backed McCarthy and had plenty to say. Congressman, why did you support Kevin McCarthy, and what do you have to say to Matt Gates, your Florida colleague? Look, Kevin McCarthy had a plan for the Republican Party for empowering the individual members to do things like 12 individual appropriations bills, to, to bond the various factions of the party together, like putting members of the Freedom Caucus that had previously not been on appropriations or rules or things like that. He had a real method to doing that, and he had a plan for moving forward. And I'll say this, I think, is the biggest uh, divide between Matt and Kevin, aside from the fact that they really personally disliked each other. Uh, and, and that was this. Kevin was very much of a first down, first down, first down, hit a touchdown, and, and that was his approach to policy. Matt, in, in my opinion, is more, if it's not a 99-yard Hail Mary resulting in a one-play touchdown, he doesn't see it as a success. And I think that dynamic, regardless of who's the speaker, will still continue to be an issue to gauge success for the party. Are you upset with Gates? Um, many of his critics argue that he did more harm to the Republican Party than good. I don't think he did any help uh, to the party in in doing this, and for these reasons, um, you now have a situation where you're asking me about Matt Gates, Kevin McCarthy, probably who's going to be the new speaker if we get to that, instead of talking to me about what's going on at Eagle Pass. Why did 10,000 people come through the southern border? What's going on with Biden investigations or Hunter or, or things like that? You're not talking to me about those things. You're talking to me about something else that has become a major distraction and, and, and even more than a distraction, a major issue. I just simply don't think it was tactical for the Republican Party in this moment. I don't think it was a tactically wise move. Who do you support for the next uh, speaker? Jim Jordan of Ohio thrown his name in the rings. Stephen Scalise of Louisiana. Others will. Do you have an early favorite? Some I you support. Yeah, right? uh, so I'll give you a little bit of the landscape and my personal opinion. Uh, so the landscape is, yes, you have Steve Scalise, Kevin Hearn, and Jim Jordan. I think Steve probably has a little bit of an edge right now. And I'll say this for two reasons. One, uh, he is the majority leader. So he is in what's known as a leadership position. Um, and for many, it will make sense for him to ascend to speaker. The other reason, and this is what I would classify as a, maybe a swampy reason, uh, you know, people call DC the swamp. So Steve is in leadership right now. If he moves up to speaker as the current majority leader, now there's an opportunity for everybody else that is in leadership to say, well, uh, I want to move up to majority leader and I want to move up to the next vacant space, which is whip. And I want to move up to this. Right. So I think you probably have a situation where those that want to take the next step up. It's in their benefit to have Steve Scalise move up. I'll give you the downside on Steve Scalise. He is a dear, dear personal friend. He is going through very serious health issues right now. And God forbid his, his health decline. And then what? We have to go through this again in six months or eight months or 10 months or something like that. I think that's part of the playing field. Jim Jordan, I think, is our greatest strategist and tactician. Uh, I think he's done yeoman work on the Judiciary Committee and even uh, you know before that. Uh, and I think he's looked at that way uh, by many. But I think that's why Steve has the current edge. I'm personally currently in the camp of Jim Jordan. Sir, last but certainly not least, how worried are you for your constituents that the business of the House will not be done and that it will impact them in real ways? Uh, spending bills that may not get passed, constituent needs that aren't addressed, that this could go on and on and on. Address that directly to your constituents, the concerns in the coming weeks, and also the standing as others around the world look at us and say, what the heck's going on? But first to the constituents. Yeah, so number one, uh, this is not the same as when you don't have a speaker right away at the beginning of Congress, because at the beginning of Congress, the speaker has to be selected first, and then all of the members get sworn in. There aren't even members of Congress in the very beginning. There are now members of Congress. People are assigned to committees. The committee work continues, even though the who is the speaker is in flux. So there are still things that are going on. I'm not going to say at the exact same level, but yes, still continuing in a way that this wasn't playing out in January when people looked at this a little bit before. Um, so is this going to slow down the process of getting to what Republicans 
Republicans want, which is 12 individual appropriations bills standing on their own instead of these big omnibus spending bills where everything's just lumped together and doesn't stand on its own merits. Yeah, that probably backs things off a little bit because there's a continuing resolution going into the early part of November, and now we're losing probably at least a week on that. Uh, there, you know, I can't say exactly what will happen at that point. If uh, you get to the point of a needing another continuing resolution, that was almost something that you could see in the cards. Why? Because even though Republicans in the House are working to those individual appropriations, the Senate is not. The Senate is led by Democrat Chuck Schumer, uh, Chuck Schumer from New York. They don't want 12 individual bills. They certainly don't want the 12 individual Republican bills that do things like secure the border and, and do the various things for defense and Ukraine and, and not have Ukraine funding in defense, things like that. There are very, very real differences that they don't want that. So that fight was going to come about one way or another. But again, I don't think it puts the Republicans in the position that we wanted to be in to look in the mirror. Democrats, meanwhile, joined in with the eight Republicans who ignored the majority of their Republican colleagues, like Brian Mast, to oust McCarthy. Here's local Democratic Congresswoman Sheila Scherfless McCormick. As a Democrat and as a Democratic caucus, we've already um, we've already felt the impact of the speaker, the former speaker, and his dishonesty. When we negotiated the debt ceiling, you know, we all came together and we negotiated, and some people won, won some and some people lost, and we felt like this was the best agreement for the American people. Now, for him to sign that agreement, that promise to America, to Americans, the president, and us, and to renege on that promise and set us down a course where we're now looking at a potential shutdown down was wrong. And I think that he lied to us, but he's also lied to his party. And that's what got us to where we are today. But there were hints of this all along. And I think that the extremists just poured gasoline on a fire that was already brewing. What a political world now. Brian Mast, who supported Kevin McCarthy, now moving on. Jim Jordan, his early choice. Sheila Scherfless McCormick and other Democrats waiting to see what happened. Upset with McCarthy. I also sought perspective from Dr. Charles Zeldin, a longtime professor of history and politics at Nova Southeastern University. Matt Gates is a Florida politician, a member of the House of Representatives. He represents the uh, panhandle of Florida. He's a conservative, but he's more than just a conservative. He's a radical conservative. Uh, he's part of the, the, the part of the Republican Party that is less concerned with governing and more concerned with remaking government in his own image, uh, of tearing down government, if you will. And what uh, image is that, Dr. Zeldin? Actually, the image of, of, of Donald Trump and the MAGA uh, Republicans. Uh, he is a representative of Donald Trump and MAGA in the House of Representatives. Even conservative editorial pages, though, are saying uh, he has no governing vision. Uh, he hasn't put forth how he would cut spending, one of his chief complaints. Didn't complain about trillions in debt run up under uh, the former administration, uh, the Trump administration. The list goes on and on and complaints about, besides trying to burn down the House, figuratively speaking, what else does he stand for? Is that sort of where we are with our politics? And what does it say well, about there are plenty of, where there, we go? There are plenty of Republicans who do want to govern, who who uh, are on occasion willing to work with Democrats to come up with bipartisan uh, budget deals and what have you. But there is a, 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 a rump element of the Republican Party in the House right now, of which Matt Gates is a leader, that really doesn't care about that doesn't care about governing, doesn't care about uh, anything except tearing down government because government is the enemy. So where do we go with that strain of thinking that some argue is growing, at least in certain quarters, certainly certain quarters within the Republican Party? Where does that put us? And where as you take a longer view, does that leave us uh, as we move forward? Well, the, the, the easy thing would be for the Republican Party as a whole to disavow this particular element in its membership. Remember, we're talking eight to 10 representatives out of the 218 or so Republicans in the House. 
the majority of the Republicans are willing to cut deals, at least occasionally. They 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 are conservative. They may right. they are MAGA. They they want to change the way government is. They want to lower spending, but they're willing to work towards that. There's a small element that isn't. And what needs to be done is for the majority of the Republicans in the House to disavow Matt Gates and his followers and ignore them. The problem is to ignore them means to work with the Democrats. And that's a, a large step for conservative Republicans to do. Ever since the 90s, it has been one of the fundamental rules of Republican Party. Thou shall not work with the Democrats. We only have about a minute left. A final thought on where we go in the fight for the next speaker. This could uh, go on for quite a while. It's going to be quite a while, I suspect. Uh, there is no obvious leader. Uh, it, 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 somebody is going to have to give in and accept a leader they're not comfortable with. Uh, traditionally, that would be the more moderate Republicans, about 25 or 26, that are in swing districts. Uh, that they would give in as they did with um, with uh, Speaker McConnell. Uh, but e expect fireworks. Mm -hmm. And uh, you write about uh, where we've been, where we're going. It's going to be, that's the interesting story yet to be written. That it is. Indeed. Up next, the Roundtable with Brian Crowley.